My name's Tom and this is a video of the day in my life as an engineer trying to work to reduce emissions and to respond to the climate emergency. So, what does it look like? Right now, it's Radio 1 Breakfast with Greg James. We tend to start each day wake up to radio. We used to be all serious and growing up listening to Radio 4, but with a few years of waking up to bad news every single day, we made the call to switch to the nation's big brother. Greg James on Radio 1. Absolutely hilarious, nonsense and pop music. A great start to the day. Radio 1 Breakfast with Greg James. Good morning. Thank you to Ariel Free. Wonderful Ariel Free. Thank you to Callum Leslie. Here we go. It's October. There's a, there's a lot of red sky around. I know I'm getting warnings already. Most days after getting out of bed, bleary eyed, I tend to take our dog, Asha, out for a little run. Sometimes just a lap of the field near our house, sometimes a little bit further. Um, and we also have a friend, uh, a friend staying with us at the moment. So today I take Asha out with their dog, Bertie. Okay, so that's run done. Just done about a mile this morning with the dogs. Give some exercise. Now in for a shower and some breakfast. When your work life and most of your waking hours are spent thinking about all things sustainability, you make little choices that will reduce your impact too. And one of them in my everyday is the breakfast that I have. Fairly bog standard malt wheats with granola and a little bit of yogurt all fine but i've made the decision to swap out the cow's milk um, that i used to have every day for oat milk so 250 mil milliliters of cow's milk could be estimated to emit around 0.8 kilograms of co2 and for oat milk we assume it's about a quarter of that so if i had that breakfast 300 days a year and that's probably at least making that little change could reduce my emissions by around 175 kilograms each year it's a small impact, but when we're searching for the gains across the pitch, it makes a meaningful change. It was my birthday yesterday, so I had a day off, which was great. Went for a walk with my dad. Hold on, dad. Hold on, Asha. Hold on, Tony. But it means I've probably got a little bit to catch up on as I have my breakfast. So what is my day job? I'm a mechanical engineer working for the local authority where I live and working to develop and commission projects to reduce emissions in my area. I did work for several years as a mechanical building services engineer for a big multidisciplinary consultancy. So I take that technical experience to help identify the challenge of the climate emergency, to come up with a solution, build the case for investment and then try and get the best out of each project. If I'm honest, I love my job. It's the Venn diagram of passion and expertise. Sometimes you hear people talking about a concept of ikigai, which I know very little about, but it's the area in the middle of that Venn diagram, including what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what can you be paid to do. And on the best days at work, it feels like I'm almost there in that middle point. And it feels like I have the potential to, do, to have a meaningful impact uh, in the area where we live which is amazing. So what's the plan for today? This morning, I have a meeting with my line manager, then a call with some consultants who've been doing some work for us on the potential for solar carports around the county. And then I have a site visit to one of my projects. Obviously during the morning, I need my coffee. I measure exactly the amount, right amount of water, get our beans from Manumit, great little coffee place, really tasty, and make myself and whoever else wants one a pour of coffee. I love the routine and being able to use all your, your kit at home from when you're working at home.
So since the pandemic, I've worked at home and now two or three days a week or parts of the days a week and in the office on the other two or three days, office or the site. I share an office at home with my wife, my wife Esther, who helps lead a charity called International Justice Mission in the UK. Her days are full of calls, so sometimes one of us needs to leave our little office and find a quiet place somewhere else, which is what I'm doing here. So what kind of projects have I worked on in the last three years of my job? Well, I've worked on everything from developing heat pump projects at leisure centres, working on energy efficiency at depots, installing solar panels, roof mounted on lots of buildings. It sometimes looks like processing and analysing data. It has been helping to develop strategy for electric vehicle charging and strategy on how we build new buildings. My work is often varied with the challenge to find emissions and reduce them as quickly as possible. And I work alongside a really dedicated and committed team doing lots of similar things. But my work isn't always in the office and it isn't always at home. Um, sometimes it's surveying, trying to investigate an issue, talking to other people through an approach uh, at certain sites or just visiting projects to check on progress. And this afternoon, we're out and about on site with some colleagues. So now I'm on my bike. I'm heading up to one of my the sites where I work, where they store pool cars, um, because we're going to spend the afternoon with some colleagues at one of my projects. But it's great to have access to pool cars that are electric. Yeah, dr doing this drive without with my own car would emit something like three or four times more CO2 than driving an electric car. So this is a great little result. Um, to be able to ride, to get one, pick up some colleagues, and then head up there. picked up the car from work and now I'm gonna to head to pick up a couple of colleagues who are coming with me to see progress at the site so importantly what is the site well I work at the local authority where I live and we have a few depots which uh, use a lot of energy to power the, the works there that includes offices heating lighting um, all the stuff that happens at a major depot. And we, we've been in this project for the last couple of years, a Europe, partly European funded project. We're building a big solar farm, three megawatt solar farm, two megawatt hour battery, we're putting air source heat pumps in the buildings. We're improving the building fabric um, to make it more efficient. What else are we doing? Oh, we're putting electric vehicle charge points so that our fleet can charge at the depot using energy from the sun to charge the battery and then using the battery to charge the electric vehicles. So this project's gonna make this depot a really, really low carbon depot and it's gonna pave the way for an electrified future of the fleet. It's a great project. So this is a pretty good project. We're basically removing any connection to fossil fuels across the majority of a major strategic depot where we live. My background is in designing systems for buildings, so that means I'm pretty excited to see low carbon heating systems going in at buildings. And at this project, we've refurbished two operational buildings where around 400 people will be based. We've done this first of all by replacing windows and also installing internal and external insulation. And you can see the cross section of one of the buildings. The yellow insulation was the original, um, which was helpful at reducing heat loss, but not very efficient. The outside insulation, the bit on the outside wall, is a more modern, dense, really efficient insulation. So these buildings now won't need a lot of heat. But for the heat they do need, we've installed air source heat pumps. And these Toshiba units, they uh, have a refrigerant circuit, so a bit like an air conditioning system. And they provide, provide heat to cassettes and fan coil units in the rooms. 
and today the team are actually mid commissioning so it was brill to feel heat coming out of one of the cassettes on in the ceiling the Toshiba units are also capable of providing hot water to a radiator circuit so in this system we serve these radiators too and the system can actually also cool a space so if we have crazy heat waves again which we're almost certain we will these spaces could be cooled although we're going to set up the controls in a way that means that we don't cool too low all year round and the last thing i'm particularly interested in within the buildings is the ventilation so we're providing fresh air for people to live inside the buildings through heat recovery units and their units either in the roof or wall mounted and it's really great to feel fresh air being supplied to a space but it feel warm rather than the cool 10 degrees that was outside that saves loads of energy in terms of heating up that fresh air okay that's the buildings the rest of the project we've installed modern led lights that dim to low level when they're not needed and we will install heat pumps to heat the germination beds in a horticultural nursery and the last thing to go in at the depot will be electric vehicle chargers for the fleet vehicles base there. And there's something like 15, 50 kilowatt chargers going in with another 27 kilowatt chargers dotted around the car park. This should mean that the fleet base at the site can be electrified as soon as they're ready for replacement. And charging infrastructure is often the thing holding back the move away from fossil fuels, especially in a rural and dispersed place like where we live. And here's the fun thing about this project. All of this will be powered by a private wire that started in the control room that's just about been finished. You can see the size of the wires that have been installed. Even these offcuts are really, really heavy. But what's the point in a private wire? Well, the site is still connected to the grid, the mains electricity grid, but it's also connected to a three megawatt solar farm and a Tesla mega pack. This means that without exporting to the grid, the solar farm can provide most of the energy to heat and light the buildings and to charge electric vehicles at the site. The battery helps spread the generation of the solar farm so we can use the energy when we really need it rather than just in the middle of the day or in daylight hours. The solar farm is so cool to see up close. This is probably only really a medium sized solar farm. In the UK we often see solar farms at around 50 megawatts. So this is a baby but it will generate over 2.2 gigawatt hours of electricity each year. That's 2.2 million kilowatt hours. The average house in the UK uses less than 3,000. So it's gonna generate a lot. That 2.2 gigawatt hours will power most of the site for most of the year. But in the darkest months, we will still need to buy some electricity from the grid. But we're nearly there, a very low carbon depot. And as the electricity grid continues to decarbonize, the site will probably be net zero in operation and it will be future proof for the next 40 years. We won't need to do much to this site to get us to 2050. To me, the whole site is an example of the wider strategy for decarbonization. We need to generate renewable electricity near where we need to use it. We then need to use that electricity to power electric vehicles where they're needed and to power heat pumps to provide heat to where that's needed. And we should do this with really efficient buildings controlled in an intelligent manner so that we don't need as much energy as we used to. We could replicate this project on a much bigger scale or a much smaller scale. The same strategy could be true of your home, it could be true of a school, or it could be true of the whole county or region. And we aren't burning anything in the process. We're barely calling on the, electric, the, the local electri electricity grid but we're able to meet the need of the public services in this area, and it's great. We think this will reduce emissions of the local authority by about 2.5% when it's finally commissioned. And obviously this is a massive investment, and it's funded in part by the European Regional Development Fund. What did the European Union ever do for us? What have the Romans ever done for us? But it's a great project. I'm really lucky to be involved in it. Okay, that's the site visit done. Let's drop the car back off and head back home to finish the work day. Okay, great trip. Car's back on charge and I'm gonna head home and do a little bit more work before the end of the day. Beautiful, beautiful autumn day for a bike ride. Okay, so that's my day done. 
a good day at work and probably a fairly normal day at work. And as I keep saying, I'm really blessed to be able to work on this kind of stuff in a professional capacity. I am a chartered engineer and a chartered environmentalist through the Institute of Mechanical Engineers. And actually when I find myself reflecting on the climate emergency, sometimes I come to the conclusion that mechanical, mechanical engineers have been responsible for a lot of the problem. We were, maybe we are, some of the designers of cars, gas boilers, oil and gas drilling operations, transportation and refining, of planes, of shipping, of power stations, and of much, much more. When you think of pollution in general, a mechanical engineer has likely had some part in causing it. But we're also potentially part of the solution. We have the tools and the understanding to identify the problem and to fix it. Heat pumps, for example, are a clever bit of thermodynamics that mechanical engineers study at university. Electric vehicles, whether cars, bikes or scooters or hoverboards, all have clever moving parts that mechanical engineers have designed. Electricity systems are reliant on the processes, processes that mechanical engineers live by. And I'm really chuffed to, to be able to say that I'm a mechanical engineer in my small little, little way working to reduce emissions and prevent the climate crisis. And I can see a big need for people with, with a background like mine, a technical background like mine to join the course. But that's a day in my life as an engineer working to reduce emissions. <laughs> starts off with the dogs, well it starts off with Greg James, then the dogs. Some oat milk, a load of emails, some meetings, meetings about solar panels, electric vehicles, heat pumps, and then finally a bit of a sermon from me to wrap it all off. I hope you found it interesting. Outside of my day job, I've been doing videos about a low carbon lifestyle on YouTube for a couple of years. And I'm planning on trying my best to use some spare time to keep asking the question of how are we going to reduce our emissions in everyday life. And if you're up for following that journey with me, please do. And please do subscribe. You can see one of the steps I've taken at home uh, to reduce my emissions by watching one of these videos about our heat pump.